Radio. You're listening to Crypto Current, the only podcast that explores the bold projects, exciting opportunities, and the growing reach of blockchain and cryptocurrency. Whether you've got skin in the game or you're just crypto curious, keep an open mind, enjoy the conversation, and stay crypto current. Now here's your host, Richard Carthon. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Cryptocurrent. Your host here, Richard Carthon. And today, I got a special guest all the way out in New York working on a really ex- exciting project um, on an international basis. We have Flory with BlockFi. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So why don't you start off by giving us a little bit of background about yourself and, and, and how you got into the space? For sure. So for those of you that aren't familiar with BlockFi, I'm one of the two founders of the company and we were started two and a half years ago. Today, we offer three products for retail consumers. The first is an interest account where you can deposit crypto with us and earn interest up to 8% on stable coins. We also offer US dollar loans so you can borrow US dollars backed by your crypto. And the third is be free trading. So we're proud to say that we have the lowest fees in the market today. Wow. Um, uh, we're going to have to unpack that later because uh, that's one of the first. I don't, uh, I'm sure you're aware, but Coinbase is um, devastating with their fees. So would love to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, they kind of rip your face off if you're using the the regular client there. So we're, we're really excited to be able to offer um, no fees to all of our clients. I think it's an awesome product and it's super fast. Um, but to your other question, the way that we got started. So two and a half years ago, Zach and I both worked in FinTech in New York, and we saw the need for financial products in crypto. So crypto back in 2017 was getting increased adoption, more people were moving into the space. And we realized that, you know, for all of these crypto investors, the banks would not be able to offer the same financial products that are available in US dollars. So having worked in financial products before, um, I used to work at a company that made loans to small businesses. We had the idea to just build everything that we already knew how to build and just apply it to crypto. And I personally was really excited about the prospect of building financial products in blockchain because the really interesting thing about crypto is the fact that you can send transactions overseas instantly without having to use a bank. And while it was really early in 2017, what I was able to kind of see in the future of crypto is the ability to offer U.S. grade financial products overseas instantly, which we've never been able to do before. Yeah. And it's you came in at an extremely opportune time, um, especially if it was at the beginning of 2017, right before the the ride up. So, I mean, talk about timing. But I mean, even previous, previously to that, when you're like looking at starting uh, this company, how, what was your first introduction into the crypto and blockchain space? Yeah, so my first introduction was through a backend engineer that I used to work with. Thanks, Steve. That was in the beginning <laughs> of 2017. Um, I think that's probably how most people heard about blockchain, but um, he kind of did a presentation for our entire company walking us through the difference between a centralized platform and a decentralized platform. And he used kind of the example of Facebook and how it enabled us, would enable us to access data instead of using a private company server, um, kind of having it distributed throughout the internet. And I really liked the concept of it, but I didn't fully understand the power of, um, you know, being able to have one asset around the world that's traded 24 seven, until I met Zach and we kind of started talking about, you know, how can we build a bridge between existing financial systems and this new world of crypto? Because we really believe that in order for this space to grow, you need access to the same products that you have in US dollars so that regular consumers can understand how to use crypto. Um, So that's kind of the bridge that we're looking to build. Um, And to your point of getting started in the middle of 2017, uh, it was both really exciting and also terrifying because <laughs> anyone who's been in the space knows what happened in the beginning of January 2018. And that's actually when we first started doing U.S. dollar loans. And the way that product works is um, if the price of crypto goes down, 
our clients have to post additional collateral to back the US dollar loan. Um, so with all the volatility in the market, it was actually a pretty difficult customer experience to build, right? We started lending when crypto was at around, you know, $15,000 for one Bitcoin, and we mm -hmm. wrote it all the way down to $3,000. And um, running a company when assets are that volatile is really difficult. And so mm -hmm. we're really excited this year to kind of see the markets turning around. Um, and it's a lot easier to build a company when the markets are moving in your favor. Oh, hundred percent. And and to that, the fact that you were able to stick out, like yes, the opportune time of the run up of seventeen to get the excitement behind it, but also to thick it out when things got really shady or, or just really really tough. Um, to to be able to write that all the way down, but to see it come back up and just the, the resilience that you've had, it's it's paid off so much. And the fact that you recently had a pretty big announcement, um, do you mind sharing that? Yeah, so we were really excited uh, early this year. We announced that we raised $30 million in our Series B. Um, and that's just huge because we have really exciting products that we want to build this year. And our investors were really excited about the momentum that we have with the company and how well we were able to achieve our 2019 goals. And so they, they said, listen, you guys are doing a fantastic job running this company. Um, we know that you had planned to raise a Series B later on in the year, but they really believe that now is the time to kind of accelerate and build the products even faster than what we had originally planned. So this year, we're looking to do uh, three things. We're going to launch a mobile app, and we're going to also launch bank integration. So you'll be able to connect your bank account directly to BlockFi, send us cash, buy crypto with us, deposit in the interest account. Um, and then lastly, the product that most people are kind of, you know, holding their breath for is a credit card where you can earn Bitcoin as rewards. And that product is uh -huh. awesome because most credit cards in the US fuel spending, right? Yes. You have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, you get points so that you can book more hotels or buy more flights or spend more money. Um, I'm really excited about this credit card because you'll be able to earn Bitcoin, which is a long term investment and can go up in value over time. Definitely. And that's actually a really unique reward system that like you're definitely the first company I've heard to, to do that. And I think it's very rewarding because you're right. It is it's in, incentivizes spending more money. And earlier you brought up something that I kind of want to harp back on. And, and even on your, your the company website, it describes how you're bridging the worlds of traditional finance and crypto. And you have a focus on the international audience, um, also in addition to what you're doing here in the States. Can you talk a little bit more to the international um, audience that you're trying to reach out to? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, one of the reasons why I started this company is because my family is originally from Argentina. And for people who aren't familiar with the Argentine economy, um, it's an extremely unstable economy. They have what's called hyperinflation, which means that every single day the peso is worth less and less. So if you have any savings, it becomes harder for you to buy your groceries or um, get dinner or pay your rent because the value of your peso is going down. So for context, when I went two years ago, the exchange rate was uh, nine pesos to $1. And when I went a couple weeks ago, the exchange rate was 83 to one, which wow. is insane. Yeah. And so crypto can fix this instantly because now we have stable coins. So what that means is that um, people in Argentina can automatically, uh, if they have access to an on-ramp system, be able to buy stable coins with, the, with their pesos and escape that hyperinflation. Um, and that's all well and good, but what I'm really excited about at BlockFi is the ability to not only allow people to escape unstable currencies, but also access you know, savings accounts and loans and things that we give for granted in the U.S., but people in many other countries can't access those. Right. And I really think working on that and focusing on that issue is what just brings so much power to the crypto space and, and, and is why I truly got fascinated by the subject of the international impact it can truly have and just leveling the playing field for everyone. Um, so... Really excited to see what y'all are doing with that and, and how it's going to help improve the livelihoods of 
people all over the world. Um, but another question on BlockFi and, and, and what you're doing, what's kind of the, you, you kind of listed out the, the three major things coming up for your, your roadmap of what's to come for BlockFi, but what are some different ways that y- your current users are able to utilize your platform? For sure. Um, so the biggest product that people love to use is the interest account. And that's basically the same thing as a savings account, except for your crypto. So you can deposit uh, Bitcoin with us. The one I'm most excited about is stablecoin. So um, GUSD and USDC, it's essentially like sending us your cash. Um, You can send it to the platform and we pay 8% in interest to keep that on our platform. And that's an interest rate, which you get paid out every month. And that's different from, let's say, like a managed portfolio at Ally, because the returns on those portfolios can go up and down with the markets, whereas an interest rate is a rate that is posted on our website and you know that that's what you're going to get paid out on the first day of the following month. Um, I love that product because I think most people that have cash and savings are earning probably the the highest rate I'm seeing is around 1.7% right now, which you can yeah. get at Marcus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's insane. It's, it's so bad. Like, sorry, I just want to attack this really quickly because, like, I feel very passionate about this. The fact, everyone, and and sorry, I'm going on a quick tirade, but, like, the banking system with your savings account is, I don't want to call it a scam, but, like, your money is not making you money. Your money is making the bank's money. And what crypto can really do is help your money make you more money. And it really sounds like BlockFi is allowing that to happen. So I'm excited to hear that. So, sorry. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) no, I mean, I feel the exact same way, right? Um, And not only that, but I think a lot of people don't even have their money in a savings account, right? Most people just have their cash in a checking account at Chase and you're not even getting 1% with that. Um, And so I always say that every single day that you're not investing money, you're losing money. And there's these awesome options that you have like our platform or even like having access to managed portfolios. Um, and we don't, I don't recommend keeping all of your cash in one place, right? It's an investment. So you should diversify the way that you keep your funds, right? If you're listening to this and you're like, not your keys, not your wallet type of person, I completely understand that. And I don't think you should put all of your crypto with us, but I do think putting a small percentage of your portfolio at BlockFi and earning, you know, five to 8%, depending on what the asset is, is definitely worth your while as opposed to just keeping all of it, you know, in your closet or just sitting at your Coinbase account. For sure. No, well, thanks for uh, for breaking that down and for, for telling us about the various ways that people can use BlockFi, but kind of shifting gears a little bit. You know, you've been in the crypto space for about three years now, and I'm sure there's all kinds of projects that you've been able to learn about and, and to, like, has your curiosity. What are some of these projects that you're kind of looking out for right now? Yeah, um, you know, there's so much that's being built in the space. And I think the biggest challenge that I see right now is, are there projects that can bridge the gap between regular consumers who aren't using crypto and crypto? So one of the challenges that I see out there is that um, in the space, you know, we have a lot of OGs that are building crypto solutions for crypto holders. And one of the things that I'm interested in is, is how can I get people that don't use crypto to easily convert in it, right? How can I get my grandmother or, you know, my high school teacher to feel comfortable using this product? Um, In terms of projects that I think are interesting, you know, at the larger scale, um, I'm focused on exchanges. Um, You know, we work very closely with Gemini. What I really like about them is um, they've built a really compliant platform uh, they've gotten all the licenses that they need. And, and while that's a little bit on the boring side, what that means is that they can get give users better value, right? So they're, they're one of the first exchanges to get insurance backed by Aon so that if their hot wallets get hacked, there's something backing that. Um, and so while building regulatory compliant platforms like BlockFi and Gemini it takes a bit longer to get it off the ground and um, it's a, it's like a very boring topic. Um, what what means is what that means is that clients that are using those platforms are a bit safer and they're and they're protected by insurance or or government regulations, which I think adds a lot of value to people and it makes it easier for people who aren't in the space to convert. Um, but people are coming up with all sorts of interesting ideas. Um, 
yesterday I was interviewing um, the founder of Unstoppable Domains. And what they're building is basically um, the ability, amongst other things, so you can host your domain on the blockchain, which is great for freedom of speech, because what happens, again, in a lot of other countries is the government will shut down websites um, for various reasons that vary from country to country. Like in the US, we have pretty good freedom of speech, but at some times it can be limited as well. And so if you're hosting your websites on the blockchain, um, that means that there is no government that can take it down, which I think is pretty interesting. But more importantly, from the use case standpoint, he's building the ability to have all of your address, like wallet, crypto wallet addresses hosted on one domain. So mm-hmm. if you want to send Bitcoin, you could be like, you know, rad.blockfi and put that into the wallet address each time. And then that gets routed directly to your wallet, which I think is wow. awesome because for anyone who's ever sent crypto before, uh, the copy and paste stressful. <laughs> and very stressful. So anything that we can do again to reduce that anxiety and make it easier for a non-crypto user person to get into the space, I think is awesome. Yeah. And I think that's really cool. And I think what you were talking about, although the topic itself to some people may be boring, it's essential because with the foundation and with more compliance and like regulatory things, you see adoption because people won't move until they know what the rules are. And like once the rules have been established, you get, you're able to move just so much faster and like get things done so much quicker. So I, I really do think that that is something everyone should be paying attention to as well and, and keeping on um, top of mind. Um, but for, another question I have for you real quick is, what are some things in the horizon either this year or in the, the near future in the crypto and blockchain space that you think people should be uh, looking out for? Um, yeah, I mean, I think increased, uh, increased development from companies that can bridge that gap between, um, consumers and, uh, regular consumers that don't own crypto and crypto. So I think like things that make it easy, uh, to convert into the space, things that make it easy to use blockchain technology without actually knowing that you're using blockchain technology. Um, I think, I'm not a trader, but I do talk to our trading team and follow the resisted fans and the price of Bitcoin. And something that I think is really exciting about it is the fact that um, the price of Bitcoin was able to withstand, you know, essentially a boom and a bust and not go to zero. So to me, that means that, you know, the asset has been tested and it's proved that it can withstand a lot of volatility. And to me, that means that you know, I think over the long term, we'll see the price continue to go up. Um, I don't know if it will take five years or 10 years to get back up to the levels that we've seen before. But I do think that if we continue to see companies that build intelligent products that add utility into the asset, we should continue to see price movement kind of reflect that growth. Absolutely. And two interesting points I kind of want to touch on in that is that you talked about how we're able to go through a boom and a bust. And one of the things that I tell multiple people in this space who are are new to it is crypto has one of two choices. It's going to crash and burn and be nothing, or it's going to be something. And the fact that it's been able to, in its life so far, be able to go through the highs and lows and still consistently be something and on track to continue to be something. And that the market caps roughly around like 300 million right now. And like, it's not even a trillion dollar market cap yet this has so much room to grow that this is so so early in this space that if you can truly get involved and understand what's going on you, this could be life-changing for you and anyone who's involved for sure and and that's the other thing that you just hit on which is it's so early a lot of people sometimes are asking me like oh did i miss the boat is it too late and um my response to that is you know next time you get into an Uber or you're checking out at the grocery store, ask your cashier if they know what Bitcoin is or if they own any. And until the answer is yes, we're still so early. Um, And I think what this space needs is more people from outside industries building what they know in crypto, because that's really what's going to help the future development of it. Absolutely. Well, Flory, really appreciate your time today. Thank you for all the knowledge you've been able to drop on us. But before you go, what is a final thought that you want to leave with all of our listeners today? 
you know, I, I love to reiterate that every single day that you're not investing money, you're losing money. It's not too early to get into crypto. Really think about, you know, your portfolio and the best way to optimize your money so that it's working for you. Definitely. And that is an absolute great final thought to leave on. And what are some different ways that people can connect with you and learn more about BlockFi? You know, we're really active on Twitter um, as you're going through our products. Uh, one thing that we built really early on to differentiate ourselves in the space is excellent client service. So as you're looking through our products, if you have any questions, I really urge people to either give us a call Monday through Friday. We have people that actually pick up the phone and know everything about our products and can answer your questions. That's and also, crucial. yeah. Not so not every crypto company does that, but we have a working phone number and you can call us and everyone on the client service team is amazing. They're low key, my favorite team. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but also you can email support at blockfi.com and uh, ask them, you know, the most complex question you can think of in our platform and they love to answer the hard questions. So as you go through it, just don't hesitate to reach out. We put a lot of effort into building a company that kind of treats everyone that interacts with us as if, you know, you were a private client at Chase and it doesn't matter if you have, you know, $10 with us because we have no minimums or $5 million with us. We can, we'll treat you the same exact way. For sure. Well, again, really appreciate your time. Everyone make sure you go out and connect with Flory and BlockFi and for everyone listening, stay CryptoCurrent. Hi everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of CryptoCurrent. For more information on this episode and all of our episodes, please visit us at www.crypto-current.co. Stay up to date with the latest news in cryptocurrency. You'll receive daily emails Monday through Friday that are personalized and curated content specific to you and your interest, powered by artificial intelligence. Are you an accredited investor looking to invest in cryptocurrency? Crescent City Capital can help. Go to crescentcitycapital.com for more information. If you're finding value in our content, please take five minutes to leave a five-star review and a great comment. Also, please make sure to share this podcast with others. Hello, everyone. I hope you're enjoying the quality of this podcast. I can only thank my amazing producer, Andrew DeRitter, with DeRitter Productions, who has put this together. If you have any podcast, visual, or video needs, please go to DeRitterProductions.com. That's D-E-R-I-T-T-E-R Productions.com. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cryptocurrent with Richard Carthon. We'll be back with more exciting developments from the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency next week. But until then, stay Cryptocurrent. Now.